up everyone welcome back to the channel first official vlog of 2024 so excited as you guys can see i have the civic behind me and i got a lot of little changes that recently got done in preparation for the 2024 race season if you haven't checked out my race schedule check it out here i'll post it you guys can see everywhere i'm going to be traveling this year starting off the year we're going to be heading to bradenton motorsports park for streetcar takeover next month in february and then following that first time ever going to texas for Texas 2K. I'm going to be racing the stick shift class, so it's going to be pretty big field and competitive, but they don't have a front wheel drive class there, so I'll be out there with the big dogs. Hopefully, um, they break down the class by your ET, I'm hoping. We'll see how it goes. Really just excited to start the season and get back behind the wheel. So today I'm back at Professional Blessing and Tire with Tavares alignment. He is realigning the car, pretty much moved some weight around in the car. I got a lot more weight now up front. And um, he's just gonna be going over everything and pretty much realigning the car and getting it ready for the 2024 season. Hopefully this will be the last time we have to line it in a while. I don't plan on making any more, you know, big changes like that. Got some pretty awesome updates to show you guys. Let's check it out. All right, starting off with the small mod, my front bumper. All I changed really was the lip. I did pink, this used to be a black gloss and I wanted to do that because I felt like from the front there was no pink really, as you guys know, mainly blue. So I felt like this pink really matches the cage and stands out, so. I'm happy with it. I am going to be changing this grill. I have another grill that I have to take this wrap off and change with. It matches the intercooler design more. I would say it's more of like a gray and then the SI is actually pink to match. And then coming to the front, got a lot of stuff missing in here. So the turbo front housing, I'm getting that powder coated. It was actually painted in the same color as the roll cage, but the paint started to basically change color from the heat, which I knew eventually was going to happen, but it happened pretty quick. So Sending it off to powder coating, trying to match it as close as possible to the roll cage. The up pipes, if y'all noticed previously, you may have or may have not noticed, I had one black and one that was just a stainless color. And that's because I forgot one of them when I went to drop it off to powder coating. So we're going to get that fixed and get them matching. And then I dropped the car off to Drew from Jokey Racing. He's done some awesome little changes in here. We got this little hook right here. So that should prevent the hood from bending in. I'll have to add a picture of the car, but at the shutdown, you can literally see the hood starting to like fold in and that's just you know from not only the mile per hour but the wind and all of that has all the factors to do with that so hopefully that prevents the hood from pretty much sinking then here we got these little gold little thingies and that is a fire suppression system that i added last race i saw a friend's car catch on fire and he was pretty messed up his face caught on fire and a lot of stuff. So I was like, you know what? I want to make the change this year out of fire suppression system. Hopefully, I pray I never have to use it. But if it's needed, I have it. Um, and it's two seconds. So I'll show you guys inside. The lever is literally right by my shifter. So God forbid something happens. Super easy. I just pull this red, pull it up. And then everything in the engine bay basically suppresses with the fire suppression system. And here's the little tank right here. Pretty small. I didn't want to go too big. Again, this is only really four cylinders. If I had a V8, I'd probably go with the bigger suppression system. Um, hopefully that's sufficient enough. Hopefully I never have to use it. Uh, shift light. Shift light location is now right in my face. So it was previously to the side and I didn't like having to look to the side at all when I was driving because I felt like I, you know, you should be looking straight all times when drag racing. Let me hop in. So now when I'm sitting, there's no excuse. This thing is right in my face. I've had to change this thing several times because it was lower and then the problem was that when I had the wheel on it was literally right where the wheel was so I couldn't see it and then previously it was right here on the side which wasn't bad I, I made it work with the last event that I raced but I just didn't like having to like play and like look to the side when I should just be looking straight forward at all times so I'm excited to see you know the little change I mean I, I did pretty fine without it being here but that's something I wanted to change and add it, you know, really in my face, so no excuses. <laughs> also in the front, we got these carbon fiber fender vents. This is really just for air. Really nice touch. I like the way it looks and the way it came out. It gives the car more of an aggressive look. So we added that. And then most importantly, these lead tanks. So these tanks came out super nice, made from Drew from Jokey Racing. So basically what you do is you fill this up with lead and the amount of lead will be figured out when we have to scale the car and all of that stuff to get it balanced correctly because obviously with me sitting on this side of the car this side is a little bit more heavier um so that's why i probably have more lead but the goal is to get it balanced you know 
as equally as possible. And the purpose of this is front wheel drive, guys. Front wheel drive cars, you want all of the weight to be pretty much in the front. So the rear end doesn't have little to no weight at all, which makes it scary on the shutdown. Because as soon as you slow down from going 180 to 90 miles per hour, it gets pretty sketchy. So we'll see with these new changes how the car feels. Like I said, first event will be at the end of February next month. Um, other than that, I've got some new quick latches here in the front. I used to have the hood taped every single time I race because so many people have lost their hoods and they've flown off from the air basically entering. This is an extra security, so really hopefully I don't have to worry about that too much. But other than that, we're pretty much good to go. We're going to just pretty much do a leak down test eventually on this engine because we've had no issues, so we don't want to pull it out and do all this work to refresh it if it's not needed. We'll just, you know, do a leak down test, make sure everything's good to go. And I'm going to run the same engine and pretty much come prepared for the next event with the backup just in case if this one decides to go out but so far we've been pretty lucky i would say and then here in the back i added some of these vents we made the holes a little bit bigger because this window was flexing pretty much my first pass ever with the car at fl2k the back window flew out and that's why i have all of these scratches and that's because we forgot to drill holes in the back so the pressure from the inside blew the window out um, but now with these holes, we should be good. Got some little rivets in here as well. Some extra security to hold it down. So we'll see because even at Orlando, I had holes in it at my last event and the window was still flexing. So hopefully with the holes being a little bit bigger, it helps out. So we'll have to see. But it sucks because I have all these scratches and I want to replace this because the whole car looks basically brand new and good except this. These back windows, guys, are $700. $700 just for a leg sand back window. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to run it. We're going to leave it like this because I don't want to spend $700 on a window that I've already bought in a set. So when I purchased it, it came with the side windows, front windshield, all of that. But just to buy this by itself basically costs almost the same as buying a whole kit. Well, half the price. So we're going to leave that for this, this year. Maybe eventually I'll end up changing it out. But yeah, for right now, that's pretty much all the updates. getting powder coated so we got these little steelies on here to roll the car around until the wheels get back from powder coating so i'm doing like a nice little combo it's gonna be black with some pink in it you'll have to stay tuned for the final look but i'm really excited to see everything together currently on the alignment rack. Tavares is doing his thing right now, so shouldn't be too much longer. Really excited to get this thing back down the track. Really had no issues going straight before, but again, we made some changes, so now we're back here. Because pretty much every time you do any little change, um, like adding weight to more to the front, or if you, you know, change the control arms, or anything like that, suspension-wise, you have to redo your alignment. These cars are meant to go straight, so you want to make sure they go straight. And this is the guy that you see when you want to go straight with your race car. All right guys, here we are. I'm pretty much in the car right now. And the purpose of this is he lines it with you in it because this is how you're going to be racing down the track. He makes sure that the wheel is straight. I hold the wheel straight. He makes his adjustments. Let's see if I can get him to explain a little bit further on how this process works because I'm sure you guys have seen an alignment done before. It's alignments are alignments. They're done every day on cars, but if you're aligning a race car, it's a little bit different. Guys, so I'm here with Tavares, the owner who does all these alignments. I was explaining to them that, you know, people do alignments all the time, but when it comes to the race car, it's very different. It has to be very specific. I mean, how many cars have you probably done? Ah, more like 50. Um, if I check the list right now, the World Fast 10, I think I got like eight, nine. I mean, it's, it's the safety bar. It's the good bar for going better at the 60, put more power. I do different cars, different tuner, different engine builders. 
different platform, you know. For me, the more important is the safety, how your car drive, right. go straight, go safety, all the way at the end, you stop right, I mean, that's how it is. Yes, and you have a car yourself, you have a front wheel drive car. Yes, I got front wheel You're pretty fast, I what's your fastest? Four, 776, 196, and number four, number five, something like that's that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And, you know, the car feels good every time I go down the track. And I'm excited to get back out there. And we'll see uh, see if I can get to your level. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> yes, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Going to end the vlog here. I'm back home. We got both of the cars reunited again. It's been a while since they've both been parked in this garage. And um, it's pretty nice to see both of the cars together. I am contemplating, as you guys may or may have not seen on my previous YouTube video with the Evo, I may be doing a giveaway with it. I love this car. It's a classic JDM car, but it's honestly a car that I don't get to enjoy and drive as much. And I would much more prefer to give it to somebody who could drive it way more often. Preferably one of you guys who watch my videos. It would be really awesome to pass this along. Hopefully take care of it. And I have some other plans. Replacing the Evo with something else is not just getting rid of the car. I do have a few cars in mind. It is a JDM car still. Um, it is a classic, iconic JDM car, I should say. So really would be getting rid of it to replace it with something else, something new, something fresh. I built this car from bottom to top. I mean, when I bought it, it was a stock Evo 8 with crusty paint. I'll have to add like some old clips here from the beginning so you guys can see just how terrible condition the car was when I got it. It does have a few rock chips and the side mirrors have absolutely no paint on it at all. Everything's pretty much stock. It has a stock turbo, stock intercooler, stock intake manifold. Completely restored it. It's in pretty good shape but yeah i mean it runs good and just deserves a good owner who can show it more love the civic gets a lot of my attention and a lot of my love and it's not purposely it's just racing drag racing in general takes a lot of time i mean every single weekend that we have a race it's pretty much whole weekend gone and, and when you're not racing you're pretty much working on the car getting it ready for the next race so I don't have time for another project and the evo essentially is another project so we'll see we may be saying goodbye to this car which will be very sad but at the same time, I'm ready for something new, something fresh. It's nice for her to come back home. She's usually in multiple different shops and getting stuff done, but now she's back home so I can show her some love. Got some little stuff I need to install, like these DSP head pads that I just got. They pretty much go inside to protect you like that, essentially. So if you, you know, God forbid something happens, your head is protected from the cage, even though you do have a helmet, but this is just extra safety so tons of stuff to come be on the lookout thank you guys so much for watching my videos thank you for supporting as i say guys trust the process i'll catch you guys in the next video peace